You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. Let me get to the study of the meaning in language. And this can be broken down into two other umbrella terms, two categories, if you will. Um, one is through linguistic expression, the words themselves, um, and how uh, they are conjugated and um, inflected in order to change mood. That would be the study of semantics. Um, if you were, try, you were studying language through, excuse me, the meaning of language through the consideration of social context, the issues, the relationship between the speaker and the audience, um, intonation, uh, etc., these are going to be pragmatics. Generally, one could say that pragmatics are the non-linguistic expressions uh, in language. Now, in semantics, word sense uh, is a, a major aspect of it because the same word can be used but have different meanings um, based in part on how it is used or placed in a sentence. Let's take the word play, for example. Um, we went to see the play Romeo and Juliet at the theater. In this case, play is a noun and could be uh, used in conjunction or sorry, synonymously with the word performance. Uh, we went to see the performance Romeo and Juliet at the theater. Um, but play doesn't always mean performance, nor is it always a noun. In the second sentence, the children went out to play in the park. This is a verb. Uh, this is not, uh, would not be synonymous with the word performance. The children went out to performance in the park. It doesn't work. Um, the children went out to run and jump uh, would be better. Those would be better synonyms here in the word play. Um, it also dictates which words uh, can be used as synonyms, which is generally a question that's asked on the test. In this case, in which sentence is the word asked uh, a synonym of the word required? In the first example, he asked them to dinner, but when the bill arrived, he expected them to pay. Well, with synonyms, you can generally just simply substitute the, the new word into the sentence. He required them to dinner. That doesn't sound right. Even though they're both verbs, that doesn't sound exactly right because the meaning of this is different. Um, he requested their presence in there. He invited them to dinner. That would be more of the uh, synonym here. Um, the professor asked the students to submit their essays on time. Well, in this case, um, the concept of submitting something on time uh, implies the concept of a consequence uh, to it and therefore required uh, makes much more sense. The professor required the students to submit their essays on time. And then there's inflection, um, the modification of a word to express different grammatical categories such as tense, mood, voice, person, number, etc. Um, in the case of conjugation of uh, verbs, there's an inflection within the verb itself. Um, when you use the word like, for example, if you're talking about a singular person, you would use uh, like, I like, you like. Um, but however, if you're talking about a singular third person, he or she likes, uh, it implies that third person-ness with just the use of that word. Uh, and that's the semantics of it. Um, if you say you like, you like they like that implies a number of people because the um, plural version of the verb uh, like is being used in this case uh, so that implies number declension also uh, implies both voice gender and mood um, in this case it would be the inflections of nouns pronouns as well as adjectives I, he, she, they is subjective, which means that it would serve as a subject generally of the sentence. Uh, you would say, I like something, not me like something. Me, you, him, her, them, uh, these are the objective, the receptive um, uh, part of the sentence. Like, um, she gave something to me, I received it. And then there's the mine, his, hers, theirs, which is the possessive aspect of it. Just the use of the word uh, creates this kind of inflection of a uh, number of people, a uh, voice of people as well. And then you can take certain words uh, which imply gender. Uh, we would have a steward or a stewardess. Uh, use of those words implies the gender of that occupation, firemen, policemen. Um, however, 
uh, we can take these words and change them to gender neutral terms. Instead of saying steward or stewardess, we could say flight attendant. Instead of saying fireman or policeman, we can say firefighter or police officer. Uh, and this would change uh, the inflected, the inflected inflection uh, that this has to do with the gender. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.